All right. Today, Friday, The View from a Pew, you're going to meet this man, Joshua Burke. All you're good for is trouble, that's what they said. I heard it so often, it stuck in my head. First with my teachers, then with the law. Outcast and loser is what I was called. But you called me chosen, and you bought back my soul. You filled me with purpose. And now my only goal is sharing your freedom with those who are bound. Singing grace so amazing, the world hears a sweet sound. Feeding the hungry, giving hope. Okay, that is the uh, melodic, melodic, beautiful <laughs> sounds of Joshua Burke, and he's in studio today. Joshua, uh, welcome to The View from a Pew here on Friday. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Glad to hear. And I had no idea, but you've been here before. I have. You uh, co-hosted with uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Roloff, yes. Yeah, and I was at a funeral, you said. I wonder yes. funeral that was. I don't know. We were talking about doubt, and you even called in when we were done. You were calling in going yeah i agree with that guy so <laughs> wow all right well it's a pleasure to meet you face to face and man where'd you get a set of pipes like that did god just give you those or did you work on that it well at both and that's the way it usually is isn't it you yeah, get a gift yeah, right. and then you gotta do something with it uh so i've been singing ever since i was very small with my parents we traveled in uh, full-time christian ministry for many many years and uh, then I went to Drake and got a degree in vocal performance. Oh, really? Yeah, opera, actually. When did you uh, go to Drake? Uh, many, long time ago. I graduated in 98, I think. Kelly Lindblad? Uh, don't Do you know. remember her? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. The only reason I ever mention mm-hmm. her is she was an incredible singer that came out of Drake, mm-hmm. went down to Florida, and uh, has become very successful in opera and things like that. But she mm-hmm. sang at my wife's and my wedding in oh, 1991. Right. Wow. So uh, she sang... The most beautiful rendition of the Lord's Prayer I've ever heard. Awesome. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Um, so you're a singer, yep. and uh, don't be shy. You've sung at some pretty cool places. I have. And for some pretty cool people. I have. Uh, I've had the privilege of singing at the United Nations. Uh, I've sung for Kofi Annan. I've sung for Christopher Reeve. Uh, I've sung for the president of Ireland. Uh, I've sung for dignitaries from all over the world. Uh, I sung at the Kennedy Center for the performing arts solo, not just like in a choir or anything. Um, I was the International Panasonic Young Soloist Award winner uh, forever ago. I don't remember. And, and how do you get these gigs? I mean, do you have an agent or do, no, how do no. they find you? They, uh, they, I just invited. Okay. So some of them were comp- competitions, but usually uh, just invitations. Uh, so the funny thing, one of my funny stories is I got, uh, I replaced, I almost, I got replaced by John Lennon just before his plane accident. So I have no... I claim no association with the plane accident. You but, got replaced by John Lennon. Yeah, so the World Food Prize called me and said, we want you to sing at the our thing. And I said, great. So I, I had no idea what the World Food Prize was. I'm thinking it's a big bake sale. You know, I don't yeah, know. Right. So I had no idea. So after I got off the phone, I looked it up and I'm like, oh, wow, this is really great. And uh, then they called back and they said, well, how about five for the, for the um, agreement? I said, sure. And I was thinking 500. They meant 5,000. And then they called me back two weeks before the food prize and said, yeah, um, we got John Lennon. So I said, is that okay if we uh, use him instead? And I said, yeah, of course. I said, you know, just call me next year. And uh, shortly after that, he had a plane track. But that's my that's one of my funny stories. Is you I, mean John Denver? John Denver, not John oh, Lennon. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So, uh, I yeah, was going to say, John Lennon, you, John are Lennon. A, you are a young looking man. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you were singing Lennon that's was killed in clean 78. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. 79? John Denver, yeah. My, my John mistake. Denver, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, um, but you also host a radio show that we hear locally on our radio station yes. called uh, uh, Your Hope Today. That's right. And it's in its third year. And we've been uh, broadcasting now all over the world. We go into 120 countries on uh, shortwave, and we're broadcast on AM and FM in Iowa, and we're all over the internet. And we're talking about hope, because yeah. that's what people need. Yeah, and you said you got it from Hebrews 11.1. 1, yes. Which says, Bob, do you know? Never mind. Faith, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. You knew that. Yeah. 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 Didn't give me a chance. I'm sorry. You That's just okay. Jump right in there. <laughs> so the the foundation of your hope today is about the fact that we in our culture, especially in America, we put a lot of emphasis on faith. And you know, a lot of people that they go to church and they pray and they need things. You know, they have things that they need from God that are like real needs. I mean, they need jobs and they need uh, yeah. health, they need that kind of stuff. And they're like more faith, more faith, more faith. Well, how is it that you more faith? It's sort of like looking harder. You're like, Ugh, you know, yeah. does that really do anything? So you're, what it does is it puts people in a trap where they emotionalize. So it's not really faith. They're just screwing up their courage or their feeling or they feel good. And what they're really getting is a transient feeling. It's not faith, but the foundation of faith, according to Hebrews 11, 1, is hope. Hope is, faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you don't have the hope. Faith is the substance things that are hoped for. Yeah, so you have to hope for it first. Okay. And the hope has to be there, and then out of this, the ground of that hope, the seed of faith will spring up and turn into the thing. But we put so much emphasis on faith in the culture that, you know, isn't it just like all of our churches, if it goes well, it's all God, and if it doesn't go well, it's all you. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, that's spiritual abuse, my friend. Yeah. And we got to stop doing that. We've got to let people know that Maybe it's not more faith than what you need. What you really need is more hope. And here's some ways to get that. So there's another scripture that says, um, God's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through knowledge of him and through his exceedingly great and precious promises. So where's the hope come from? It comes from the word. And so that's what we do in Your Hope Today. We, we take concepts, not just Bible verses, but ideas, and we unpack them from Scripture to, in order to give people a foundation upon which to hope. So it's a scriptural foundation. And then we turn right around... Every show, we ask three questions. It's like, you know, uh, what, how, and why. So do you need this? How can we get more of this in your life? And what can you do today, right now, to get whatever we're talking about into your life? And so we take those things, we build that foundation, and then we say practical application number one, practical application number two, practical application number three. Every show. Joshua Burke is our guest. He is the host of Your Hope Today, which you can hear on 99.3 KTIA each Saturday at 1.30 p.m. And you also have a website, which is... Yourhopetoday.com. Man, you were early enough to get the one you wanted. Yeah, I used to be a web developer. So when I get an idea, I buy domains right away. I do too. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I, have, I have a suitcase full of domains yes. over the years. Um, but now I just... I, I have my own private line into GoDaddy. So there you they, go, they know right? who I am. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you, you said you were raised by parents who were missionaries? No, just uh, itinerant ministers. We travel around and, and minister to different denominations. Okay. Um, so in one night I'd be in a Catholic church, the next night I could be in a Pentecostal church, and the next night I could be Baptist. Singing? Singing. My mom is a gospel singer. A lot of people in Iowa know her. It's Gwen Burke, and uh, she uh, toured all over the United States. Um, she's got several albums out. And uh, my dad was a teacher, and, and we would travel around and speak and sing and just minister to Where people. Where do they live now? In Ankeny. In Ankeny. Oh, yeah. so they live locally. Yes. And Mom's listening, so hi, Mom. Um, are, they, <laughs> um, are they retired? Yes. Well, my dad works. Mom's retired. Okay. And uh, they're just Well, if Mom's thing. listening, I'd like Mom to call in. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'd, Mom, if you, Gwen, if you could call in, we'd love to hear from you, 244 uh, 0077. And our toll-free number, if you're outside our area, is 1-855-244-0077. We had, do um, you know who Nathan Thomas is? Uh, that name sounds familiar Nathan to me. is the um, uh, worship leader mm -hmm. at um, Brian Assembly mm -hmm. in uh, Pleasant Hill. Ah. And he came in, stood right where you are, but he had his organ, his mm -hmm. standing organ with an amp. And that man, have you, I've, I've never heard live anybody like that. Have you? I, I don't know. He I just, have, but I mean, he's very good. Unbelievable. It's just incredible what he plays and sings. And his mom called. 
Oh. And it was so cool to have his mom jump in. And she lived, I don't Ohio or something like that. It was so much fun to have mom jump in and be a part of the show and just say hi. And we ask her some questions about her son and some things like that. Not embarrassing questions. Sure, of course. Of course no, not. Nothing like that. No. And he sang her favorite song. He did. He sang, which was? Don't remember. I don't remember either. I was hoping <laughs> you would. Um, and so uh, the music that you're going to hear uh, going in and coming out of our segments today, what we call bumper music, because they bump into the uh, programs and then transition into the commercials and then transition out of the commercials and bump into the program, that's going to be your singing and playing. Now, do, what do you play? Uh, I'm just a singer. I mean, I play the piano and the guitar, but not well enough to you know stand up in front of anybody. So you don't accompany yourself? No, no. I just sing. Okay. Yeah. And family outside of your mom and dad? Uh, my lovely wife and son. We live in Waukee, and uh, we're just living life out there. And what's her name? Uh, Amy. And what does Amy work outside the house? No, she's uh, she makes sure everything runs at home. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> Which is more of a challenge. That's right. Than and your son's name? Yeah, yeah his name's Caleb, and uh -huh. he's uh, he's at Waukee. And how old is he? Uh, eight. Well, he's going to turn eight in uh, just a week. Okay. So, well, yeah. that that's uh, that's neat. Uh, and for those of you that are living outside of Des Moines or even outside of central Iowa, mm -hmm. um, Des Moines got a pretty cool little accommodation the other day from the Today Show. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you hear about this? I, I didn't. It said that we are one of the richest places to live. And they started out the, the program or the, the piece saying, where do the rich people live in this country? And they were showing high rises in Manhattan and mm -hmm. million dollar homes in Malibu. And then they cut to downtown Des Moines and said, these are the richest people around. Mm -hmm. And they talked about our skating rink. They talked about our, our art galleries. They talked about the downtown and how it was growing. They talked about the insurance industry. Uh, they showed uh, different things around our area. And I thought that was a pretty good piece because if you're an employer here in Des Moines, and you're trying to attract somebody from the beautiful left or right coast or right. from Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, having that from the Today Show, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is nice. That's like a nice that. prop. All right. Uh, Ryan is producing today. Let's uh, play one of uh, Joshua's songs. And we'll come back in a few minutes and uh, talk some of the... Um, uh, the questions that we use for the pastors. Boy, I got right. a, I'm short I'm today. in this hot seat. It's Friday. It, I don't know why. I think I miss week. Maddie. Yeah. I just <laughs> miss sure. her. I miss sure Maddie. I'm used to having Maddie there. So <laughs> anyway, some music and singing from Joshua Burke, and then we'll be back here live on The View from a Pew on KTIA Iowa, powered by webcast1live.com. Like sand would one day blow away, those held dear no longer stay. There is a rock upon whose strength I lay, who will never, never change. When each success that I would call my own. Distant memory. There is a rock much higher than I have known, comes to break me tenderly. Oh God.
Studios. This is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm Administrative Manager. I'm the Senior Technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Some more Joshua Burke music here live on KTIA, The View from a Pew. All you're good for is trouble, that's what they said. I heard it so often, it stuck in my head. First with my teachers, then with the law. Outcast and loser is what I was called. But you called me chosen and you bought back my soul. You filled me with purpose and now my only goal. Joshua Burke here live on The View from a Pew on KTIA this afternoon. What is that song called? That's all I'm good for. That's all I'm good for. Now, yes. do you write these? No. No. Do you no. write anything? Uh, 
radio shows. Okay, but, yes, but I don't write. I don't write. My mom's a songwriter, not me. But uh, I uh, I just sing. But these these songs came from. So we we didn't spare any expense when we did this CD. We did it in Nashville. We did it in the Sound Kitchen. Had a great producer. Um, we pulled music from all over the place and went through that painstaking process of narrowing down the songs for this. Yeah. And uh, that's all I'm good for. Just leapt out of me because as a child, I struggle with attention deficit disorder, hyperactivity. and Squirrel. Yeah, exactly. And uh, all that kind of stuff and really had a lot of challenges and struggles there. And that one kind of really resonated with me. All the, all the songs on the CD resonate with me. Uh, in some way. And how do I get the CD if I want one? Not can, that we're trying to sell CDs, but that's a beautiful voice, I would, and I, I would bet love you'd to like to CDs. have that. Yeah, so uh, joshuaburke.org. You can go there, okay. and you can just buy the CD right off the right off the site, purchase CDs. You can also listen. There's a listening room there where you can hear snippets of each of the songs. Yeah, I, I, I cheated. I listened to them all the Did other you? day. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you got the perfect amount. It's like putting a bunch of delicious uh, uh, t- uh, topi- um, uh, jello in like a thumb cup and then saying <laughs> here taste this but you can have more if you come over here that's right so, so anyway yes please please go visit and please uh pick up a cd and i uh, got lots of them to yeah. sell and give away so now we talked to mom and mom doesn't want to come on the radio and that's fine yep. but that's you can, but since she won't can you tell me something about her i mean tell me it's an embarrassing moment for her an embarrassing oh i don't know I, you wouldn't do that no probably, would you? no uh-uh. and your wife's on chat yes can you tell us anything about your wife? Some embarrassing moment or something? She, no, she's no? she's. I, I will tell you one thing. She is a great lady. Well, my of course wife she is, is. My wife is awesome. Yeah. How did you meet? So, uh, we met in college. Okay. Where? And, and Drake Choir. Okay. We were both in Drake Choir, and we were kind of the the uh, well mother hens of the Drake Choir. So okay. I took care of all the guys, made sure they had their bow ties and you know extra stuff, and she would take care of the girls. And we would always like do the risers when everybody else was out talking and doing stuff. We were busy putting things away. Yeah. Good friends in college. Didn't date in college, and because I was a chicken, that was the reason. That was the reason. You why. were a chicken. I was the chicken. Yes. Chicken for what? You chicken. Did... I couldn't ask her. I wouldn't ask her out because I. You know, did was, she go out with other guys? No, no, but I just thought. But did you go out with other girls? Not well. So not you really. really did kind of date? No, well, no, we were just friends. Oh yeah, and so mm-hmm. yeah, you heard that, didn't you, yeah. mom? They were so, just friends. Yes, yeah, so we were. But anyway, after after college, I finally got up the courage to ask her out. So she, could, you could have lost her. She I could have slipped away to some handsome guy like Bob. I know, and that's <laughs> that would have been my loss because that would have been my chickendom that did the de- chickendom that did the. De- <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, so, t- what are you passionate about? I'm passionate about helping people see hope, because you know, hope is like oxygen for the soul. If we don't have it, it's like you know, you don't know it's missing until it's missing, and then once it's missing, then we really notice. And uh, so many people don't have hope, especially in today's world with the all the stuff that's going on and things are just nuts. And we really need hope right now more than anything yeah. else. And so if I can be that voice that just gives that sparks, that makes that touch point between someone and God and just says, yeah, I can, I can believe in that. I can hope in that. That's what I, that's all I go for. That's all, that's all I'm you after. Go for. Yeah. That, that's your purpose. That's right? what I want to, that's what I want to be. And it doesn't matter how that comes. So yeah. the, the listening prayer CD, the reason it's called listening prayer is because I think we talk too much and we don't listen enough to God. So we get up and we get our list and we go, oh, God, please bless. And we go yeah, through all right. that stuff, right? And then when we're done, God's like, hey, I, uh, oh, I guess, oh, okay. okay, never mind. Yeah. yeah, see what I mean? So the whole idea of the CD was to create an environment where people could just put it on and just listen. Is it, is it one long, hour long? No, it's 12, 12 tracks. 12 tracks, but yeah. you're not singing. No, I am singing. Oh, that's the one you are. Because don't mm-hmm. you have one that you're not singing? No. Uh-huh. No, okay. No, but I sing. But the, it's just to create an environment where people can just listen to God and okay. just and get that other direction going where they're they're listening for the leading of God. And now, then you play one of my favorite songs, mm-hmm. Holy, Holy, Holy. Oh, yeah. That is one of my favorite songs, but you didn't bring that one, did you? I didn't. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. All right. Um, yeah, I was... Uh, um, I got mugged by Jesus about four years ago, and yeah. before that, I wasn't a very good guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, but God gave me, and like you, and like your mom, gave me just an incredible wife. Now of I don't know how many years, be thirty years next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I used to say to her, she she's she's a preacher's kid, and she believes in hope. And her favorite uh, is Jeremiah twenty nine. Mm-hmm. You know. And I used to tell her that uh, hope's just a wish without a plan because I didn't understand hope. Mm-hmm. And then after Jesus mugged me, I got it. And I love the way you put it because that's, that's a good way of putting it. 
Yeah. All right, uh, Bob, should we throw some questions at him? All right. Now, he's, yeah. now you, you go to a Reformed church. Yes, ask me the questions, bridge keeper. I'm not afraid. What, uh, what, <laughs> what help me understand it, it, the denomination. Is Reformed the denomination? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so what, what I'm Lutheran. What do we believe in that's different? Uh, well, Lutheran is, but the difference between Lutheranism and Reformed church is pretty slight. So a Reformed church is a mainstream church. Okay. Um, the basic doctrines are all there. Are you Calvinist? No. Well, the church is, yes. Mm-hmm. The church is, mm-hmm. but you're not. No, I'm kind of in between. Okay. So you'd be like me. Yeah. I, I just don't get the mm-hmm. limited atonement thing. I, no, atonement. I, yeah. So I, I think, and I, I've read Calvin's commentaries and I've read the Institutes of the Christian Religion and I've gave it a fair shake. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I think Calvin's misunderstood a lot. Yeah. Somebody told me once that he was the, if you looked at religions as professions. Mm-hmm. He was the engineer of Christianity. He has to take everything apart mm-hmm. and examine it and every v- vowel and every word and every dit and feather right. and dot and everything yep. else. And so reading the manual and using the stereo are two different things. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And you're a stereo <laughs> user and a yes. Calvinist is the read it, reading the manual. Right. But as you know, it's like the old saying, the map is not the territory. So, you know, that's the, that's the thing. And especially today, we live in a world where you can look up any theological position you want in two seconds. Okay. So you can read Calvin, you can read Arminius, you That's can right, read... That's right, you really can, can't you? You, you, mean, you know what I mean? You, you want to have Bible a... Bible Gateway is my favorite right. app. So, yeah, so I mean, anything you want to look up, theological, scriptural, whatever, however one want comparisons. If you want to you read about Jacob's Ladder being aliens coming down, you can read that, or you can read it about... I mean, how, whatever, however you want to slice and dice it, right? So we've got this buffet-style faith going on. So we've got people going through, and they pick the theology that they want, and they yeah. put it on the plate, right. and they put it together. Well... Even if you assemble all those pieces and parts, it's not the same as the relationship. It's, yeah, it's not. You're it's right. not. Yeah. So where does the theology meet the relationship? And it happens Christ. in Christ. Yeah. And when we get there, when we get to those two things touching, that's when we start to either revise our relationship based on what we say we believe and we make a God unto ourselves, okay. or we let the relationship change the theology okay my my uh, uh i'm very fortunate to have in my life a pastor who has taken me under his wing mm-hmm. and w- what he's trying to do is he's trying to rub off all the uh sand off all the rough edges mm-hmm. so that i can facilitate and teach bible classes because i'm mm-hmm. passionate about the word i just mm-hmm. i can't get enough of it power tools uh in fact i just this year have started a year-long study of romans mm-hmm. and last wednesday we, we finished our third day and we're up to the seventh verse mm-hmm. in chapter one i mean we're really cooking through romans in three weeks right but richard says this is pastor richard who's a pastor at lutheran church of hope mm-hmm. and just a brilliant guy he says there's only one interpretation of the Bible, but there are endless applications. Yes. Okay. You would agree with that. Mm-hmm. All right. Richard, you're right. Jo- Joshua thinks you're right, so you must be right. Right. And, so that, and that's one of the other things. You know, we kind of treat the Bible like we treat law. So when we go to law, it's it, however you interpret the law, you know, however yeah, you can twist right. it around. But that's not true. So and it's not Bible is not a truth. It is the, the truth. Truth. Yeah. And so it's the objective measure upon which other things should be measured. So if we're measuring the Bible based on our interpretation of the Bible, then we're we're already coming to error. You know. Yeah. So there was a there's a great book I have. I have this book called Idioms and. Uh, Idioms of the New Testament, and uh, it's this big old thick thing. goes through all the Greek and Hebrew idioms, and because I love to study in the original languages as much as I can. And uh, so in the opening of the book, he, he makes this illustration. He says, when, when you come to the sundial in the dark and you bring your lamp, you can make it say whatever time you wish. Mm-hmm. But when the sun comes up, mm-hmm. we, see the true, we see the true time. Mm-hmm. And he said, and such is the interpretations of man in Scripture. When mm-hmm. we bring our own lamp and our own understanding, we can make it say whatever we want. Yeah. But it has to be in the light of the true sun that we see the true times. Well, I thought that was a brilliant yeah, observation. I like that. Yeah, I, I guess my question is that is that a problem for people uh, in the church? Because you said the church mm-hmm. believes one way, and you're not necessarily believing the same way. Is that mm-hmm. a problem for you or for them? I don't think so. Or you it, are you not asking, or they're not? No, I mean, well, when we came to the church, I mean, I love our, I love that church. It's a great place. Uh, when we came to the church, I had come from the Assembly of God. So, I mean, you know, that's where he came. Same <laughs> yeah, here. I mean, you know, like, you know, how how much different can you get than that? Yeah. So, I mean, 
but I, I didn't care. And the, one of the things that unique about me is because I grew up it's in so many different denominations. Like was in Baptist church. I got to see the whole thing. And, you know, it's the old joke about, you know, when you get to heaven and the angel says, shh, and they said, what? And it says, we're going by the Baptist. They think they're the only ones up here. <laughs> you know, yeah. you get to, you get to that sort of mentality in theology. We're right. And we're going to heaven. Well, we're all describing the elephant in different parts. And so one of the things that I have, which I think is unique, is because I've been in so many different denominations, I see the tapestry of it. Mm -hmm. And like each denomination emphasizes some important aspect of the nature and character of God. I mean, if you if you can just zoom back the lens, they're all focusing on some important piece. And then in the aggregate, those important pieces become less important as we start to look at the entire thing. And that's really what it's all about. Well, I sure chose a smart guy, didn't I? See, I did pretty good today. If Matty was here, he could dumb it down, though, a little bit. But we have a guy by the name of Matty who's uh -huh. just a wonderful man, and he's a Brit. Ah. And he talks with marbles in his mouth, uh -huh. and you can barely understand him, mm -hmm. but he laughs. Well, I can speak in a British accent if you wish. No, not like oh, him. Oh, not like that? Not yeah. high British? He, 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 no. He's very difficult to understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's play a little bit more Joshua Burke music as we head to the commercial when we come back some of our questions here on View okay. from the Pew on KTIA Iowa. Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Hey, psst. let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? 
We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. I asked Joshua to uh, uh, bring one of my favorite songs. I'm an Episcopalian by birth, and this is an Episcopalian hymn. Now, I thought that for years. I later learned it's just a hymn, but it's one of my favorites. This is Holy, 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 sung by Joshua Burke, who's live with us today on The View from a Pew on 99.3 KTIA, powered by webcastonelive.com. Let's sit back and enjoy Joshua Burke. can uh, find uh, Joshua's music at joshuaburke.org and you can order uh, different CDs and uh, uh, what a joy it is to have him in the studio today. He also hosts a show on KTIA here every Saturday at 1.30. Uh, so that would be right after um, the kids from Des Moines Christian do their show, Fighting the Current from noon to one. No, 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 no. I think I'm off. I think may. Yeah, we're noon to one, I think. On Saturday. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom Coates and I got together and funded uh, 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 some radio time and studio time for the kids at Des Moines Christian, and they mm-hmm. now have a weekly. Oh, uh, I've heard their show. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty good at it. Yeah, they are. And that's completely student run. Even the producer, Ryan, taught him, and that was it. So it's a pretty. <laughs> Pretty neat little ministry. That's an awesome thing, you know, mentoring kids because, you know, especially for radio, because everybody's like, "Oh, radio." Man. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of life in radio, and it's still a really, I mean, it's a wonderful venue and a wonderful sure. ministry tool. Yeah. And we've got to get find a way to get kids well, interested in. It. My daughter went through Des Moines Christian all the way from the time she was two years old, went to their daycare, and mm-hmm. then ended up graduating from high school. And I wanted her to be able to take a broadcast course, and mm-hmm. they don't have any. Right. And quite frankly, that's okay. I understand why. Limited dollars, let's focus on the fundamentals. Mm-hmm. So when I built Webcast One, I had known Bob Stouffer for years, and we got together and said, we got to do this. So we kicked it off last year, and we're hoping that it just is continually run by the students, and they just come in and do their shows, and that's a great thing. That's awesome. So, all right. Um, uh, by the way, I also want to mention that um, uh, Joshua's passion is based on Hebrew 11.1, 1, which is understanding uh, that you must have faith, and then you can have hope. Uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but to have a hope without faith is, is nothing. Right. So if you have hope and you don't have faith, you've got a good feeling, right? Okay. And those kinds of things come and go. They can have a good day, a bad day. That's not hope. Hope is an immovable sort of thing. So the way I like to explain it to people is like, you have the parable of the sower. And, and you know, sure. so the good Matthew. man come out to cast good seed into the ground. And then you get the different kinds of soil and the other kind of stuff. So why was he out there in the first place? Yeah. Hope. Hope. Right. Good. Right. Good point. So what got him up 
to yeah. go cast the seed, right? He had hope. Yeah. And we, you know, we know that the, that the sower of the seed is, is uh, Christ or the Father, however, depending on how you want to look at the, sure. the parable. But at the same time, if you just put it in a purely Herman context, without that, you're not even, you know, and if you don't plan anything, you're not going to get a harvest. Ask any farmer. You know, if you've got a bag of seed in the barn, you don't have a harvest in the in the thing. You got to right. put it in the ground. So hope is the invisible power of God working in the heart. So Bible makes it clear that the heart is the soil. So the soil and heart in, in those parables are synonymous. So in that soil, that's the invisible power that works on that seed of hope and or seed of faith and gets it to spring up, right? Well, we got to amend that soil. We've got to be the good soil for that. So that means we got to get the rocks out of there and the thorns out of mm-hmm. there and the thistles out of there and keep the birds away so that we can do that. Hope accomplishes that task. Why didn't you go to seminary? Did you not feel called? So that's kind of an interesting question because you know, any young man who has even the slightest interest in the Bible, they're like, oh, you got to be a pastor. You know, it's like the push. You know, you got to go to seminary. And there's nothing wrong with seminary. I mean, you know, there's nothing that you can't do after seminary that you could do before you went, right? right? So it's going to be a great thing. But I didn't ever see myself as a pastor. And honestly, a lot of times I think uh, people get hampered by the title. Yes. And so because they have the mantle, then there are certain things that are expected of them sure. that they that they can or and or cannot say. Sure, I and agree. I don't want to be burdened with that. So going back to our conversation about denomination, you were saying earlier. So as a pastor, I could never say um, all the denominations are wrong. Right. Every denomination it has an error in it. There's no nothing's perfect. There's yeah. no perfect church because it's made up of imperfect people. Right. Right. So right. There's, we're guaranteed that we've misinterpreted something. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, but as a pastor, you can't say that. Well, you just, you just, uh, you, you've got that, that presence. Oh, thanks. You know, you seem like a, you seem like the guy I'd call at two thirty in the morning when my, my, my life is falling apart and I need, <laughs> you know, an accountability partner to bring Christ <laughs> back to the center. But of you me. can do that and still call him and he can yeah. still fill that. Uh, I doubt if he'd give me his work number or his home number, <laughs> you know, the emergency <laughs> number. But you know, I was going to say when people, if people say, what's your denomination? I say it's the same as Christ. Christian. Yeah. yeah. Well, Christ was a Jew. Yeah. Yes, he was. And I honestly <laughs> believe that uh, when the reconciliation of all things comes, there's going to be a lot of surprised people. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because? Because because Christ was a Jew. Not, and I'm not saying that we're under Jewish law, so don't, I don't want anybody to go all legalistic on me. But I think that uh, when you look at the Savior, when you look at him as Savior of the world and what he did and his second coming, if you read about the person that he is or who he he describes himself to be in Revelation, even in his own words, there's going to be some surprised folks. Yeah. We, uh, uh, N.T. Wright, do you know who that is? Oh, uh, yes. All right. Mm-hmm. N.T. Wright uh, says that if Paul returned today, yep. he would be, bla- he, say, he would say the Christians are blaspheming God mm-hmm. because Christianity is not a religion. It's, it's the Jew who got their uh, named and predicted and prophesied Messiah. And so how could you dare create another religion outside of the Jew? Right. So there is, and even Jesus said that he was sent first to the house of Israel. So if you remember the the story of the woman who came up to him and who uh, had a sick child and he said, or was you know possessed by a demon. And she said, you know, well, if you would say the word to heal my daughter, and he says the, the bread isn't for the dogs, you know, but she said the dog, even the dogs eat the crumbs of the, so she was a Gentile woman at that point. And uh, he wasn't going to minister to her. And that's, a, that's an interesting parable because you see the, the Jewish Jesus and the Savior Jesus kind of struggling even within himself. He's like, well, we don't talk to you. But then at the same time, her faith made her whole. But you see, he came first to the house of Israel and then opened to the Gentiles. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it is for everyone. So there's a community of faith. The seed of Abraham is the, are the people that have accepted Christ as Messiah. And then there's the there's the nation of Israel, which is also the seed of Abraham, and God will again come to them first. They're the people of the book. We got to honor. Oh, that. this uh, this should be a two hour show today. I think Joshua's yeah. coming back. Sure. Don't you? <laughs> he should he should yeah. come back? All right, we're coming up a break. Let's play a little bit more of Joshua's music, and then I am going to get to a couple questions. All right, all right. These are important to my listeners. Okay, I'm, right. I'm game. Uh, this is Joshua Burke singing for us here on KTIA.
Now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. Shalom. Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Hey, this is Doc with Doc and Lefty. I want to tell you about our brand new time slot. It's from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. It's on the same night, Tuesdays. We now follow Ed Fallon and the Fallon Forum on webcast1live.com. I want to tell you a little bit about our show. Our show is focused on local, state, and national, and sometimes international politics. We like to keep people updated and informed. We also have very interesting guests. So please join us every Tuesday from 6.30 7.30 p.m. on webcast1live.com. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Here's a little more Joshua Burke for you. We'll listen and then talk live on KTIA. Let me pray a listening prayer. Let my heart keep still that I might see the wisdom of your gracious, perfect will. Let me pray a listening prayer. Quiet me until I find that every need I have Your love alone can fill With a wordless openness Help me to receive All the truth you long to tell Through the silence that's the uh, beautiful singing of Joshua Burke. Did you? Um, I want to get to some of these questions, but uh, I, when? When? Uh, the question is, when were you saved? Which time? Which time? <laughs> so I accepted. I accepted Christ as a as a young child, probably six or seven, and uh, you know, I believe that that was a true conversion. I don't believe that it was one of those, you know hanging on by your fingernails kind of things that kids do because they did something naughty and they want to, yeah. you know, because God saw it, you know, not one of those things. So I believe that was a true conversion. And then uh, when I was a teenager, um, I rededicated my life to Christ. And uh, I, I understood at that particular time what the sacrifice was about. And I think that made all the difference. Mm -hmm. So was I saved before? Yes. Uh, but did, when, when did I come into a deeper understanding of... Uh, what Christ had done for me, it was in my teenage years. Okay. Uh, here's one of the questions I love to ask. Okay. Uh, do you have a relationship with the accuser? Uh, as little as possible. But you have one. Everybody does. Good for you. You'd be surprised, my friend, at how many people sat in that very seat. Yes. And I don't have a relationship with the accuser. If he can whisper in your ear, you have a relationship yeah. with him. And All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, are we a spiritual being having a human experience or a human being having a spiritual experience? So both sides of that question are incorrect. Okay. We are a soul. Okay. Okay. That's not a spirit? No, that's different. So, okay. you know, there's two theologies on this. You can be, you can be spirit body or you can be body, soul, spirit. So, you know, 
for the spirit for the spirit body folks you're going to have to bear with me but uh, if we say that we are a living soul because that's what it says in Genesis that God created the body and he breathed the spirit into man and man became a living soul okay okay so as a soul we experience the body the world through the body because the soul is that meeting point between body and spirit right okay. but the true self is the spirit because if you take any one of those pieces away if you take the body away from the spirit, you're at your true self. If you take the spirit out of the body, your body isn't your true self. Was I, was I something before I was conceived? Yes. And is that a spirit or yeah. a soul? That was a spirit. Spirit. Yes. But I, I believe that I believe now this is, I might differ from some people cause I don't believe there's a big like tub of spirits waiting to come down into little okay. babies. Okay. So I believe that we are created in, with, created in the mother's womb that that we didn't exist before and that we were we are a unique creation and so when when god blows the spirit into mm -hmm. us yeah. that creates the soul which is the housing unit for the spirit yeah the body is the the body is the temple so it's the same it's the same organization as the tabernacle in the wilderness or the temple okay. of god you got the outer court which is the body the yeah. inner court which is the soul which is the the buffer zone between the holy of holies or the inner court where the spirit itself dwells body is built the same way okay um do you believe in predestination uh yes but not in the way that you might think not in so, a calvinistic not way. in a calvinistic way. so i don't believe that i can't i don't believe it's possible to not miss it okay <laughs> um, can you lose your salvation? Uh, yes. How? Uh, by blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that someone who has salvation and then for whatever usually horrible event in their life in which they choose to then blaspheme the Holy Spirit, did they ever have salvation then? Yeah, the Bible basically says that you can you can do that now, because it says the Bible. Jesus said when they were calling him Beelzebub that he was doing he was casting out demons by the power of demons. He told the Pharisees that you know all sins shall be forgiven men save this, but you know, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness for that. Right. There, there just isn't. So that is the way. Because if there is something for which you cannot be forgiven, if you cannot be forgiven, you can't enter heaven. It is is blaspheme as simple as? Uh, taking the Lord's name in vain? No, 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 no. This is when you deny him, you push him away, you say he doesn't exist, and you then go to the dark? So, no, according to Scripture, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when you call the works of God the works of the devil. The works of the works that the Holy Spirit does, you say are evil. And that, and that, I don't mean in a casual way, I mean you, you yeah. mean it. You can't accidentally do this. And this is something that, you know, lots of young Christians are like, oh, did I blaspheme the Holy Spirit? If you're worried about it, you didn't do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Okay. Um, can I be, can you be, can someone be a Christian, but do it all by themselves? No. No? No. No? Mm -mm. Okay. And what is it, by the way? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 you have a personal relationship with Jesus, but it never is spoken on your tongue. You never walk into a church. You never pray with someone. No one around you, no one around you, no one around you would know you have that relationship. Oh, well, uh, I suppose it's feasible, but I don't, I don't know. So you, you could be, you can be saved and just, you know, live by yourself. Right. Yeah. Well, here's what one of the pastors that we had on a few months ago. I've been asking this question for 20-some years. Mm -hmm. And this pastor, the only time he's ever given, me, at least for us, an answer that really made sense. He said, yes, mm -hmm. you have salvation, you're saved, you're a Christian, mm -hmm. but you're not an obedient one. Fair enough. You are not following what Jesus says you will do if you follow me. Yes. Okay. All not right. With that, I agree. Last, uh, last question. Mm -hmm. Is tolerance the characteristic of a man with no convictions? No, not at all. Okay. Tell me about that. So look at the way Jesus ministered to people. Okay. All the people that he healed and all the people that he talked to, even the people that he specifically forgave their sin. Whenever did he, was he intolerant to them? Never. Only when he turned over the tables. Right. The only person, only people ever that he was intolerant with were the Sadducees and Pharisees. Yeah. And why was that? Because they should have known better. Yeah. They're the teachers of the law. They were wearing the mantle. So 
uh, is it, would it be okay with me to, for me to be like intolerant of a pastor? Probably. Or, and, and for likewise, for someone to be tolerant of me because I'm out here saying, oh, I've got this radio show and I'm trying to share yeah. some truth. Okay, well, that makes me more responsible. Joshua Burke has been our guest today. The music you hear in the background and the music you heard today can be available for you at joshuaburke.org. His radio show is Saturdays 1.30 right here on KTIA. It's called Your uh, Hope uh, Today. And uh, you can find, again, Joshua at joshuaburke.org. Thanks for being here, Josh. We hope you come back. It was my pleasure. Thanks, Mac. I'll see you Sunday live on Restoring Hope Live when we uh, start step four of the 12 steps of recovery. And until then, Bob, thanks for being here. Ryan, thanks for producing. I'm J. Michael McCoy. And do one thing for me this weekend, would you? Just one. Just pray. <laughs>